So welcome to Curated Cribs at the Talma Museum of Art. I'm Cindy Peterson, the Executive Director, and it is a pleasure to have everyone join us this evening. We have the Curated Cribs spotlight on the McDowell Aikens Collection, and we'll go behind the scenes, into the vault, into the works on paper, as well as learning about this monumental gift to our community and to this museum, and hear from family member Rand Garrett. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to, we have two of our staff joining in that know a lot about the collection. And that's Dr. Carl Willers, our Chief Curator and Deputy Director of Exhibitions and Community Engagement, along with Mary Legu, our Registrar. And Mary has been with the museum for over 30 years, and she has met uh, Peggy McDowell Thomas uh, during that time frame as she was courted uh, for by many art scholars and um, that gift came as a bequest to, to our museum. And Carl, I'll hand it over to you uh, to give an overview of the Aikens Holdings. I want to talk to you a little bit about Peggy McDowell Thomas's monumental bequest to the museum that was made in 2001. The McDowell Aikens collection makes up approximately 10% of the museum's overall permanent collections. Peggy's bequest really put the museum on the map in many ways. It includes a number of paintings, four portraits by the great 19th century American realist painter, Thomas Aikens, six paintings by his wife, Susan McDowell Aikens, and 11 by Susan's sister, Elizabeth McDowell Kenton. The gift also includes roughly, roughly 300 Japanese prints, which we, we will take a look at in just a little bit, as well as a number of pieces of ephemera that Peggy inherited and were passed down in the family, including Thomas Aiken's microscope, a collection of objects related to the McDowell family, including personal family correspondence and a large group of early photographs and photographic negatives. Aikens was well known for his use of early photographic methods within his work. In fact, many portraits can be traced to photographs. I think we're going to pull up a screen share here where we will get to see a few pieces of this collection within the museum's vault. And there is, you'll notice a number of paintings from the collection as Mary pulls out this screen. Top right, there's a self-portrait of Susan McDowell Aikens called Anguish. Immediately below and to the left of that is Man, Man with Hand painted by Thomas Aikens of his father-in-law, William H. McDowell. That would be Susan's father. And on the left, you just saw a portrait of Walter S. McDowell by Thomas Aikens. That would be Susan's brother. And to the left of that, we're gonna come upon a portrait of a child. And this is the portrait of Peggy's father, Walter S. McDowell's son. Walter G. McDowell, painted by Elizabeth McDowell Kenton, Susan's sister. At the center, there's a portrait painted by Elizabeth McDowell Kenton called Portrait of a Woman in White, said to be of her sister, Mary McDowell. So I'll go ahead and, and jump in here and okay. you know, the the museum, you know, that monumental gift as, as Peggy McDowell Thomas, and she was born in, in 1912 and passed in 2001, and she was a native of Roanoke, as, as Carl said, and the great niece of the famed American realist uh, Thomas Aikens. And you know, over the years, she had inherited a number of his portraits and personal effects. And museums really across the nation were courting her. And for decades, um, art scholars came, came to Roanoke and she went to different places. And you know, we're so grateful to that she selected this as, as her as the home of her collection. 
And she wanted those works to really stay in Roanoke, her hometown. And but others, you know, like the Pennsylvania Academy, where Aikens had taught, as well as the Philadelphia Museum, to just name a couple, were very interested in this collection. And our building, the Taube Museum of Art, designed by architect Randall Stout, um, was commissioned in part to really house this collection and that generous 2001 bequest. So with that, I would, um, you know, many people were, were involved in, in that process, including Deborah Force, who was on another curated cribs that assisted us with our collection and Haywood Fralin to name a couple. And so as we look at those ties to the Roanoke community, let's pull up the, uh, the family tree. And we have a special guest joining us this evening from the family. You heard a lot of names as Carl was talking about, about the collection. And so you can see in that purple on the right-hand side, that's where Peggy McDowell Thomas, and that's where that collection comes to the museum bequested in 2001. And um, Walter McDowell um, was one of the eight children uh, and he came and made Roanoke his home as he was working for uh, the North uh, Norfolk Western Railroad. And you can see in the in the highlighted white boxes is where Susan McDowell with Thomas Aikens and then Susan's sister, Mary McDowell and Elizabeth McDowell. And you'll hear a little bit more um, about, about them. And as we work down the family tree, Walter McDowell had two children, Rebecca and um, Dick, as, as he was known. And Rebecca um, had two children. And um, we'll be hearing from a special guest, um, Rand Garrett, who is the grandson of Rebecca. And Rand is in transit right now, but he is on the call. He was able to join. And we have a pre recorded video to talk and hear behind the scenes stories. And as you know, as I'll introduce Rand before we, we show the video, uh, Rand Garrett grew up in Ver Roanoke, Virginia. He attended North Cross School and went on to graduate to graduate from the University of Virginia's McIntyre School of Commerce. A military veteran, he served as a lieutenant in the United States Army. He is the former president of Cheney, Thomas, Stephenson, and Hill Insurance brokerage firm. He is married to Jan Garrett, and they have three daughters and six grandchildren. And I welcome our special guest, Rand Garrett. Welcome, Rand. Uh, it's wonderful to have you join me today. And right now we can see the portrait of Hannah G. McDowell and the portrait of William H. McDowell. And would love to start out with the question of your family history and how it landed and the family landed in Roanoke. Well, th this portrait here is uh, of William McDowell and his wife, uh, Hannah. Uh, and they, William was an engraver and photographer in Philadelphia, and he had, they had uh, eight children, uh, one of whom is uh, Walter, and he, he came to run out, uh, he had been with the Pennsylvania Railroad, and at that time, the owners of the Pennsylvania Railroad had a huge stake in what was then the Norfolk and Western Railroad headquartered in Rono. So, William's son, Walter, was sent down here by the Pennsylvania Railroad to work for the NNW. And so that's how uh, Walter got here. And then he had two children, my grandmother, Rebecca, and my great uncle, Walter II, uh, who we called Uncle Dick. And that's and the reason that these Aikens paintings ended up in a run-up so, so, so many of them were because uh, Thomas Aikens and Susan McDowell Aikens had no children. And so some of the paintings drifted to uh, their family. And interesting uh, portrait of uh, Walter here uh, is by Susan. And it ended up in my brother's hands, McDowell, who happens to name, and that's how he ended up with the painting because his name is McDowell. So when, when the grandchildren end up getting the different uh, paintings by, by uh, primarily Susan, uh, 
my brother as a kid <laughs> and I were playing in the house and he was chasing me and on it with a, a, a string with two balls on it and they sliced this canvas which was a disaster in the family as you can imagine but it all ended okay because uh, they sent it to uh, Philadelphia I think to have it restored and at the same time it needed cleaning so it was clean and made much better and it also the, the, the two slashes in it were taken away and repaired and so when the different paintings were parceled out my brother whose name is McDowell ended up with that portrait and that's that's he has that what a, what a great story of how you know how do paintings get divvied up in a family right exactly <laughs> Well, let's, that's, a, that's a wonderful way to start this because this is that family tree as we you know, work down. You're the um, grandson of Rebecca, which we'll you know, get to in just a second. So the next uh, slide, as we move um, through the family tree, is a portrait of, of Walter McDowell and, and Rachel McDowell, who are your great grandparents. Exactly. Uh, and interesting, they, of course, Walter, again, came down here with the railroad and um, and they lived in Roanoke and they went to St. John's Church, apparently. Uh, and I only know this because I, I received some uh, copies of letters that he wrote to the minister at St. John's at the time when uh, uh, Rachel died in, in 1927, I think. And then he uh, died uh, three years later in 1930. But they were apparently members of St. John's Church, which is ironic, uh, interesting, because that's where I go today. So that, that family um, you know, integration in our community continues. And yes. as we progress, you know, this is, of course, this one right here is by Thomas Aikens uh, and is in our, in our collection. And this particular uh, painting on the left is in our collection at the Tama Museum of Art, the portrait of Mary and Elizabeth McDowell, which were one of the eight siblings that you mentioned before. And the two photographs are of Elizabeth. Tell us a little bit about, you know, Elizabeth and your, you know, your, your recollection and, and the stories that were told in your family. Well, Elizabeth started out was, was a character I was told and Elizabeth, uh, ended up living in Roanoke and she she did not die until 1953 so therefore my parents knew her well and my grandmother was still alive so so my grandmother who I call mom B Rebecca uh, knew her well and I, I think she actually lived with my grandmother for a while but for the most part apparently she lived at Hotel Roanoke and um, after the war that would be World War II uh, or during the war I should say uh, we they were blackouts uh, Elizabeth did not like to participate in blackouts for some reason, and so she was uh, uh, charged to have to go to court, and uh, she was summoned to court, and uh, this is a story my father used to tell, and so she goes to court, furious, and uh, they call her name, so to speak, or her case up, and uh, she stood up dramatically and said, I've never been so inconvenienced in my life and turned around and walked out. And all my life I've heard about uh, uh, Aunt Lizzie was quite a character. And so interestingly, we, one of my daughters uh, who turned out to be somewhat like her is named Elizabeth McDowell Garrett. So uh, it, the family keeps on rolling. And I will, that's, I will never look at this painting again in the same, in the same viewpoint. So I'll hear the voice of, of Elizabeth McDowell, as you've just conveyed. We always heard she was a character. I always heard that. So as we progress then through, you know, the family tree, here is Susan McDowell uh, and a self-portrait as well as uh, the, the painting that's in our permanent collection and photographs of her as a young adult. Yeah, the, this portrait, the self-portrait is one I have and it, she painted it based on a lithograph, uh, a small lithograph. And it, it, it precisely, it looks like it's a photograph of it, although it was painted, it looks like a, another photograph. It's right, right on the money. Amazing. And again, uh, a 
painting of Susan um, and from the Peggy McDowell Thomas gift in our permanent collection. And here we go, Walter McDowell and Rebecca McDowell. And like you said, referred to as Mom B and so many memories uh, that, yeah. that you have in terms of, of this, this you know, instrumental family. Right, well, uh, it's the, uh, the portrait on the left is, uh, is a Walter who we call, everybody called him Dick. So he was my great uncle, Uncle Dick. And uh, on the right, of course, is my grandmother, uh, who I call Mom B. And Uncle Dick lived in one house next door. Uh, my grandmother and my parents and I lived in one house and next door to us on the other side, uh, my father's sister. And Maston and Garrett Maston lived along with my, my, the, the Maston cousins. So we had three houses uh, all in a row up there. So and a lot of excitement on on the weekends as, as kids were playing outside and, and doing other things, right? Yeah. Now, Uncle Dick there, Walter, uh, he was quite a outdoors sort of guy. And uh, he uh, he great remembrance about him. He had a, had built a, a replica of a cannon on the USS Constitution, and he would uh, fire it off every July the 4th. And all the kids in the neighborhood would come by and he'd uh, light it and it would make a big, huge explosion. So he was quite a character too. There are a lot of, everybody whose last name is, uh, it has the name McDowell seems to be a character in the family. Well, I'm sure there's many, you know, memories of others that are residents of Roanoke that will remember some of those stories as well. And as we move to the next slide, you know, there is Rebecca and Walter, uh, siblings, and that, you know, only a year apart. Yeah. So in, here they were as kids, but at the same time, they in, end up in, as seniors living right next door to each other. And actually... They both lived in South Rock Nursing Home at the same time as they were rural seniors. Well, and and Rebecca lived to age 97. So you really were able to spend, you know, many years uh, with her. And as you said, in the same household. And as we move to the next slide, really seeing you know, this is an, an, a recent um, acquisition uh, from the museum. It was a gift to the museum in this past decade. Uh, but tell a little bit about the background because it doesn't really show the personality that uh, Rebecca or better known as Mom B was known for. Yeah, this is a photograph I have on the left. Uh, and I guess she's in her, I am guess her late teens. And then uh, the portrait of her by Thomas Aikens uh, is when she was, I think, 23 years old. And at the time, she did not like it. And as the years went by, she kept talking about it. She didn't, it didn't capture her in the way she wanted to be captured. And so she never had any interest in, in owning the picture. And I don't, I don't know if uh, it was a commission work or uh, Thomas Aikens just did it to some more poetry work. But uh, she never, uh, never accepted it, and 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 I have to say that she doesn't look, it's, it's, she doesn't look like she. I remember her. Uh, she doesn't look happy and uh, carefree. And we'll we'll say I think another picture will come up of her, and uh, that's the way I remember her. Now that's uh, of course mom be on that photo of mom be on the left, but my grandmother. That's the way I remember her. Now. She's obviously a senior, but she was also a very active senior. And I will tell you, uh, she was a widow for about 50 years. So she knew how to take care of herself. And she uh, was uh, in the neighborhood. She was well known. And she went by Mom B, not just to her grandchildren and me, but to every, every kid in the neighborhood, including uh, my adult friends now. They know her as Mom B. And uh, I, I, I heard a story about uh, Mom B as a middle ager from my father-in-law uh, who used to hang out at Mom B's house uh, because uh, apparently my, my aunt, Aunt Ann, uh, was right cute and popular. So all the boys in the gang would hang over at Mom B's house. And Mom, according to my father-in-law, she loved it. She liked the inter 
to entertain and goof off with the other ki the ki the kids. So uh, she was a she was a party person, and it, she one of her first question was always, "Did you have a good time? Did you have a good time?" And so that's what she liked to do. And also, uh, she again she was very active, and she started driving at a. She, according to my father, she was one of the first women to run to start driving, but she drove pretty much <laughs> until she was close to nine years old, I'd say maybe over 90. But one thing she would do, um, she would want to go by the bank and check the, her lockbox to see if everything was still in there. She kept cash in the lockbox and she'd like to go down there and check it. So uh, my brother and I'd have to take her down there and, and the First National Bank on Jefferson Street and she would, we'd have to park the car and block the road and she would get out and the lock boxes were on the uh, basement at the time. And of course it took quite some time and, and of course we were glad to do it. And, but when she could get back, she said, well, we've got that done. She said, well, now I guess you can just push me down the elevator shaft. She had a great sense of humor. Well, thank you, Rand, for, for sharing you know, this, the multiple stories of both, you know, your grandmother, Rebecca McDowell, and that legacy will continue because the permanent collection we house, um, as we've seen through this, throughout this presentation, a number of, of paintings and um, the the stories that you shared and the characters, uh, as you've as you've indicated, uh, you know that will continue to be able to share with future generations. That's so. good. I'm glad to be part of it. Thank you. So that monumental gift makes up 10% of our permanent collection. Our permanent collection, uh, we have a 2,245 artworks in the permanent collection, and 60% of the permanent collection is works on paper. And part of this gift, the Peggy Thomas McDowell, the McDowell Thomas collection, 27 paintings as, as we saw in the vault as, as Mary was pulling out and Carl was talking about the various paintings, but then also the rest of that gift. So everything from letters and sketches and photographs um, and a microscope, but also 200 Japanese woodblock prints. And so Carl is gonna take us on that journey into the works on paper. And we'll see a little bit behind the scenes of, of the rest of the collection. Yes, I think we're going to uh, start with a bit of a slideshow that um, talks about the, the extent of this ma uh, magnificent gift. Uh, it, as um, Cindy mentioned, it included, um, you know, not just paintings, but a tremendous number of um, drawings and watercolors, works on paper. And of course, Aikens, uh, much of his career, he did uh, paint family and friends um, of his in Philadelphia, including um, the extensive McDowell family and um, his wife's family, his in-laws. And I think if we start, um, the slideshow we're going to first see, um, yes, some photographs of um, Elizabeth McDowell Kenton. This is Susan, one of Susan's younger sisters. Um, she had two younger sisters. Uh, and here we also, we see both a glass negative of um, the piece of Elizabeth McDowell holding fan. It's in three quarters view there, but also um, another photographic portrait of Mary McDowell, um, Susan's you know, other younger sister. And here we see Susan McDowell Aiken's portrait of her two younger sisters. Um, their um, portrait of Mary McDowell in the family called Doll um, on the left and on the right, um, Elizabeth McDowell Kenton or then Elizabeth McDowell. Um, I, a lot of um, the gift were actually works um, not only by Susan, but by her sister, Elizabeth McDowell, known as Lizzie. Um, and um, this you see um, untitled Boats on the Shore is um, a later um, painting by Elizabeth McDowell Kenton, very much in a much more impressionist style 
which um, her work tended to toward um, later in the 19th century and early 20th century. We have um, Lizzie McDowell's um, notebooks and composition books. Um, here you see a meticulously drawn um, map of Ireland which, um, you know, is, is really uh, quite interesting because one of the earliest works we have by Thomas Aikens is also, you know, his childhood drawing, um, drawings of maps um, within, within the collection. And also, um, you know, here you have another example of a painting by Elizabeth McDowell Kenton ca um, called Daydreams. It's a port a portrait of Caroline Aiken, Aikens, who was Thomas Aiken's little sister. And very much more um, within the style that we sort of associate um, with Thomas Aikens. You know, both Susan and um, her sister, Elizabeth McDowell, were students of Thomas Aikens at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and learn their, um, you know, uh, much of their, uh, you know, painting skills. Both were extraordinarily accomplished painters in their own right and um, really um, underrepresented um, and much deserving of, of um, much greater attention for the accomplishment of their own work. Because as you can see, um, this is an extraordinary um, portrait, um, relatively small, um, but the, the portrait that we saw um, by Susan of her two sisters was actually um, life size. So uh, a yeah, significant um, 19th century masterpiece of realism. Uh, some examples of the scrapbooks that came um, with the gift. Um, these are Elizabeth McDowell Kenton's scrapbooks, Lizzie's scrapbooks. Uh, just, you know, full of uh, family anecdotes, and it's interesting to see the way the family um, would write to each other, would um, share, like, you know, drawings and portraitures. It was a very artistic family, um, both on the McDowell and the Aiken side. Uh, Thomas Aikens was, um, his father was actually a, um, um, uh, skilled at, um, at um, writing, and um, that was his profession, in fact, as he would, um, you know, produce, um, you know, documents in, like, extraordinarily um, refined script, and so as you look through the, the letters and documents of the entire family, um, that kind of legacy, that kind of care that was taken in, um, you know, sharing anecdotes, um, is often accompanied by like extraordinarily artistic um, manuscripts. And the calligraphy, as you can see for, um, you know, for many members of the family is quite refined. This is actually a portrait by Carl Van Vechten of Susan McDowell Aikens, later in life, of course, and accompanied by a letter from Aunt Sue to her nephew, um, Dick Walter G. McDowell, who you heard um, Rand Garrett, you know, refer to as his um, great uncle. And this is a um, a lovely letter, um, which is uh, it was um, actually as a request from Peggy McDowell Thomas to her um, aunt, um, Susan McDowell Aikens, um, when she was in school writing a paper on Aikens art, um, she, um, she wrote to Susan asking for um, some information and some memories. And it's an, ex it's an extraordinary document which um, in obviously, you know, beautiful script about um, Susan's memories, um, some of her most poignant memories of um, Thomas Aikens and his life as an artist. 
Um, the gift, as I think it's been mentioned, also included a vast number of Japanese prints, which were, um, we're talking about the um, collected in the late 19th, very early 20th century. Um, and, you know, we are talking about the era of Japanese, which um, Japanese prints were um, highly valued and greatly sought by modernists, both in Europe and the United States. It's sort of a, a, a what an indicator of the sophistication of these families. They were extraordinarily well-educated, extraordinarily well-traveled, um, really citizens of the world. And, and, um, and ex, you know, as you can see from many of their portraits, fashionable, well-dressed, um, either you know, very prominent businessmen within their community, or um, women of um, a, you know, extraordinary taste and culture as well as um, artistic training and in, and in, um, in many areas, not only you know, within painting, but um, within uh, many of the design arts. And um, the gift included, we have here just examples of, um, um, of several Japanese prints from, from the Edo period. Um, that um, are sort of known as um, as uh, you know, some of the masters of Japanese like printmaking in um, the ukiyo-e style of woodblock printing and painting. Um, Utagawa Kuniyoshi, um, one of the most famous, um, known for many, many large series of woodblock, woodblock prints um, covering various aspects of Japanese life, everything from like kabuki actors um, to landscapes uh, to, um, you know, just uh, beautiful, fashionable women of um, within Japanese society. Also, uh, Sukioka Yoti Yoshitoshi, who um, was also, um, you know, extraordinarily famous for his woodblock prints of the Edo period in Japan, as was Ogata Gekko. And I think that might conclude our, our slides, but I hope it conveyed like some sense of um, really the sophistication and, and you know, artistic um, efflorescence of these two families based in Philadelphia, but um, with members of the McDowell family um, moving here to Roanoke. And that's how the Talman Museum um, came eventually to acquire um, the um, Aiken's gift from Peggy McDowell Thomas. Um, who was a descendant of um, Susan Aiken's brother, Walter McDowell. Thanks for the, the overview, taking us uh, behind the scenes to the vault and to the works on paper. Uh, and Rand, thank you for being our special guest this evening and telling the stories and about both the, the, the family and different generations. And that leads us to our first question. Are there artists in the younger generations? So from your, from your family across the board in terms of your brothers and sisters and their, their children, as well as I know that you have three children and six grandchildren. I, I think, unfortunately, the artistic creative abilities slowed down by the time we got down to our generation. Although my sister did some, worked a little bit when she was a teenager. And, and matter of fact, during the pandemic, she told me she's cranking that up again. So maybe she'll bring it back up. Well, thank you. And, and thanks, for, thanks for doing the interview with me. I know everyone enjoyed hearing from you and hearing the stories. Uh, you know, maybe not that artistic part, as you said, is passed on, but definitely the character part, as you describe. <laughs> so, I, um, I think so. <laughs> is there anything that you'd like to, to add, Rand, as you've, have you, as you've seen some of the things that we pulled from the permanent collection and from the works on paper? 
uh, and the manuscripts. So amazing to have those on file. Well, one interesting thing, uh, you, you had a, a portrait of uh, my grandmother, uh, Mom B, Rebecca, when she was about 10 years old or so uh, by um, Aunt Lizzie, I believe. And that has ended up, um, my, uh, everybody in the family, it looked like, it, they thought it looked like my aunt and Garrett Maston. And so that portrait ended up with my cousin, Randy Maston, who is deceased and it's now owned and run by his widow, Becky Maston, just because everybody thought it looked like uh, Aunt Anne, that would be Mom B's daughter. Uh, interesting. It's interesting, thank you. Oh. And another question that came up was, you know, what happens with these types of recordings? And is that going to become part of our archive? And yes, so Rand, this, this recording that we did together, along with this curated cribs, will be part of that Aikens archive so that you know, for generations in the future, uh, we'll have that, that historical part. And we are embarking on an oral history project. So we, as the Tama Museum of Art, we are incorporated in 1951 and we will be celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2026, which is just right around the corner. And so a lot of the oral history that, you know, from the collection, from those in our community that have built this institution um, will be a part of that.